Hey everybody, my name's Jay and you're watching Plasma Channel. So a while ago, I shot a video on fire tornadoes. They're a wicked, crazy cool phenomenon. They actually happen out in nature, but despite how exotic they are, they really only rely on one master physics concept to exist, and that's convection. These types of vortexes are self-feeding. They rely on air coming in at the base at an angle, and convection pulls that air straight up. Well, since then I've wondered why can't electrical plasma do the same thing? In fact, electrical plasma is even hotter so it should cause even more convection. Maybe you can make a plasma vortex. After a little bit of experimenting, I think I've come up with something that's pretty close to a plasma vortex. So in this video, I'm going to show you the journey I took and the results I got. Now making a vortex of plasma using convection, it should be possible in theory, but before I go ahead and show you some really cool footage, I wanna make it clear that this video is more of a documentation on my experiments and my attempts at making a plasma vortex. Starting out, I thought it would be pretty cool to have this vortex on display inside of an acrylic cylinder. So I took one end of the cylinder and cut notches in it in such a way that air flows in at an angle from the base. Then, using this 9 kilovolt neon sign transformer, I drew an arc inside the cylinder, hoping for it to spin. But surprisingly, that did absolutely nothing and just made a normal looking arc like this. So I decided on a different approach. I'll cut the cylinder in half and offset the two sides so that the convection is fed from the sides as opposed from the base. After a little bit of experimenting, I found that if I can get the arc to ignite in the center of the two offset sides, it causes enough spinning convection to create a little bit of a twisted arc. As you can see here, it's, it's twisted a little bit, but uh, not, not too much. But we have our proof of concept, which is important. But if we're going to make a vortex, it needs to be more efficient. So I placed the two wires through the sides of the acrylic using nuts and bolts, and I found that this helped a lot with the airflow. Here you can see with the two fixed wires that it's much easier to initiate the spark and there's much cleaner airflow and it's actually starting to twist a little bit more than last time, at least compared to when I was holding the wires with my bare hands. All right, so I'm starting to see that the plasma is just hot enough to cause convection to start taking place and make a little bit of a vortex shape, but you saw the footage, it's really not a vortex, not a tornado, not yet but convection is caused by rising heat, so I'm wondering if we increase the current in the spark, maybe it'll cause more heat, more convection, more twist. And right now I'm using nine kilovolts at 30 milliamps. I'm gonna go ahead and double the current and make it nine kilovolts at 60 milliamps of current and see if that makes a difference. So here's what the arc looks like at 60 milliamps. You can tell it's way hotter and has tons more convection. That'll cook a hot dog. Right, so let's see if 60 milliamps at 9 kilovolts has what it takes to make a better vortex. You can already see it's a much brighter arc, it's already starting to spin, and this is looking promising. How about that? That's pretty much a vortex made of pure plasma. And I watched that footage like three, four times over. I think it's wicked cool. Um, in the middle of experimenting though, I noticed something really interesting, which is that if you wanna make the vortex stronger, you don't wanna add more voltage. Actually adding more voltage kind of damages the spin, so to speak, because um, if you have your two electrodes right here, and your electricity is confined, so to speak, in the plasma stream that's going up, if the voltage gets too high, there's an inclination for the spark to just go ahead and jump across the gap and start the whole cycle all over again and cut off the plasma. As opposed to keeping the voltage the same, but increasing the current, now that plasma stream is much less likely to break and it's going to stay um, intact and spin longer and twist longer, making even more of a vortex. So adding more current as opposed to increasing the voltage is actually more beneficial. So what I'm gonna do is going forward is I think I'm gonna shoot another video here in the, the very near future and I'm gonna ramp up the current even more and, and see, see what I can get. While this experiment is wicked cool, unless you have experience with high voltage, I don't recommend you try this for yourself. But if you do give it a try, always remember the one hand rule. 
That means keep one hand in your pocket at all times. Thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to Plasma Channel. Check us out on other social media, and feel free to check out our various other episodes. With science every two weeks, you stay classy.